Okay, that, that's 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 fair. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm a Christian, and uh, I'm I'm asking atheists, uh, why why are you an atheist? You know, kind of like, well, what is your reason? Um, what's your story? Uh, like, what what kind of like led you to to believe that? So yeah, go go, go ahead. Uh, Sure. If you actually give me one second, I'm going to go move to a less echoey room. I'm actually not a Satanist, but there, I guess there's more to that than just... Yeah, that's fair. Also, uh, welcome, Virtus. Uh, good to see you. Uh, gracias. Hello. Thanks. Appreciate that. Hang on, I just dropped my vape in the toilet. Uh, sorry to hear that. But, uh, but yeah, so, so, uh, Virtus, did you have, uh, any thoughts, questions, comments? Um, I don't have any questions. Uh, I always have thoughts. Okay. That's sure. Okay. Are you guys there? Yeah. Cool. Um, so, I guess what? So, what was your, your? You're just wondering why? Why people choose to be atheist, or what their well, their whole thing is? Sure. So, like, why? Why are, are you an atheist uh, specifically? Yeah. Um, and I just want to make make it clear that, like, although I'm not like a Christian by any means, um, I really don't identify with like being an atheist either. Um, a lot of people that run with the atheist crowd are very, like, pretentious, and um, I'm not ever trying to disprove anybody's God or, you know, anything like that. Um, I just, I was, I grew up Christian. Um, my mom was very, like, open-minded as far as letting, letting, she, she, she would, you know, bring us to church, but she would let us know that, like, we didn't have to subscribe to, like, this specific like way of thinking she mostly just kind of had it as like a because she was a single mom so like church was kind of like a structural like crutch i guess and that's what i kind of used it as or she used it as but like i think the thing that just made me turn away was well the fact that i'm gay um <laughs> is one thing i grew up in california i was never like really like abused about it um but just there was something, something felt just intrinsically wrong sitting in a room full of people that are like, oh, you know, you're welcome here to like be in our church and like, you know, it's all cool. We don't judge, you know, but like you're going to hell at the end of the day, but like, you know, you can try. Um, so it, I just, you know, I couldn't. And then I started asking critical questions that just couldn't be answered. Um and then I started looking at things like Jehovah's Witnesses and more, uh, you know, Latter Day Saints, and I was like, "Wow, this is really culty." And I just, and then just like the whole, and then I moved to the South, the Bible Belt specifically, South Carolina, um, and it, there's more churches than there are schools, and just to see how everybody is that that is like religious is so like just judgmental and impartial to just yeah well i'm gonna be judgmental right now change your profile pick and come back no oh darth is a bully i'm out of here okay bye bye uh, I mean, no we're not gonna have some pervert with some pornographic uh avatar he's gone well no i'm not a bully but I am quite aggressive with people who are belligerent, bickering, deceitful, and dishonest, okay? For those people who uh, think like adults, act like adults, we can have a good, vigorous, you know, adult interaction and disagreement. But you lie to me, you BS, you behave like a 15-year-old at the cafeteria table, uh, then, then I'm going to get indignant. No, I'm not a bully. These people get what they deserve because they're scumbags. Yeah, right, Jeff. See you later. Hit the road, Jeff. You lying piece of garbage. Hmm. And he's gone. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here's a guy. Here's a guy who claims he's a medical doctor, right? And when he's asked, when you invoke facts, do they explicitly or implicitly 
reference the necessity of God? And he says, well, I don't know. We're, we're not talking about, we're talking about what you do. Do you reference the necessity of God? Mm-hmm. Okay. Talk about what you do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm glad to give people a chance, you know, the whole uh, come as you are. Like, we don't need to clean ourselves up before we, we come to God and such. Or... Well, but did you did you notice that guy's porno av- avatar? Uh, yeah, yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Okay, well, you shouldn't tolerate that. Uh, hmm. I mean, what is wrong with people? You can't pick a normal avatar. Hmm. You have to pick a, a pornographic picture. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good, good question. That's a good question. But uh, but yeah. So yeah, you know, I'm Look, I'm, I'm glad to. So uh, Theo, Theo, you know this already, but I'll, I'll say it again as a refresher and to people in the audience. When I'm dealing with people who are rejecting the God of the Bible, okay, what if it's clear to me they have a basic familiarity with the Bible, okay, the biblical message, then I know that I'm dealing with a person who to one degree or another is going to be dishonest with me because they're being dishonest to God. Now, As an interlocutor, I can put up with a certain amount of dishonesty vis-a-vis their saying why they don't believe in God. But once it passes a clear threshold, where it's clear to me that they're using it as a a strategy, they're consciously doing this, then we're done, okay? And this this is what many atheists do. They they reserve this strategy. To be dishonest. You heard Yuri doing it here earlier, okay? Mm-hmm. He, he lied about that we had previously interaction interacted. He lied that I recognized his voice, okay? He didn't admit that he was a part of the angstrike groupie cult, right? And then he deploys the stuff, what's the argument for that routine, okay? Why do I need an argument if nothing's ultimate? Mm-hmm. If there's nothing governing everything, then what do I need an argument for anything for? Yeah. But yeah, so uh, I guess, you know, Achiever, I, I appreciate what, what you said. Uh, you know, I listened to everything you said, and, you know, I, I do hope that things go well for you. Um, you know, that you uh, kind of, like, turn your way, turn away or find your way um you know out, out of the darkness that you're in okay petro we're going to give you another chance i hope you up your adult game because if you don't you're going to be out of here yeah. good evening so why are you an atheist i would say with a small a yeah i can't hear you get close to your mic oh sorry can you hear me i have my volume cranked all the way up sir hold on let me just But uh, but yeah, you know, just just in general, uh, Cheever, you know, God God's way is, is the best way, right? God God is not evil or bad, or you know, he, he doesn't like hate us or anything. God wills that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. And when you or I um, try to choose um, like other definitions, uh, like other lifestyles and stuff, like. Uh, we're, we're, we're saying, hey, God, like we're, we, we know more than you, we're more righteous than you, we're more holy, and, you know, that, that just isn't true. We, we need to be humble right, before God. He, he is good. He is holy. Um, he knows what's best for us, what's worth the best for us, and he has established uh, the, the, the boundaries for certain things for good reasons. Uh, you know, he, God, God knows what he's doing, essentially, right? So, and there is form and function and purpose. 
All right, Petro, we're ready. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, why are you an atheist? I, I would say uh, atheist with a small a. Because All right, hold on. A... Your mic is still not good. I'll put it in my headset. Maybe that'll improve. Wait, okay. Hold on, just give me a second. Try it now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, that's much better. I put it in my earpiece, so it's better. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, so atheism, atheism in this room is defined as the denial of any gods. Okay. So, are you an atheist? Not of the way you just. Uh, well, that's the it. standard definition. That's the standard definition of atheism. Okay. There are no yeah, gods. The, the reason why I say atheism with a small a is as a philosopher or someone who's engaged in philosophy, I think even logic itself, you know, this is why we have these debates, because I don't think you can disprove God using logic, right? And then we have science, which also is kind of searching for truth meaning right they, they could be a, Pedro, a right are you an atheist as defined so i would say i reject uh the abrahamic okay. faith for example okay. because Pedro, of, are you an me, atheist as i have defined it uh, no, no okay do you claim to suspend judgment as to the claim that god does or does not exist do you suspend judgment in a sense, you can say that, yeah. Okay, now that's a, that's a claim. Let's examine if that's true, okay? Yeah. So, when one believes or does not believe in God, they, you cannot believe or not believe in God in isolation to God's relationship or non-relationship to facts, okay? So, in the God world, all facts would derive and depend on God, all facts that are not God. And in the not-God world, no facts would, by necessity, derive and depend upon God. So do you understand the relationship of facts within both worlds? Which facts are you speaking of? In the God world, all facts that are not God would derive and depend upon God by necessity. In the not-God world, facts would not have any relationship by necessity to God as supreme being and creator because he wouldn't exist. So do you understand that facts will have a relationship or not have a relationship to God, depending on your worldview? Do you understand that? I, I have a different take. Now, sir, this is, this is definitionally true. It's not something that you can object to. Okay. I don't think, I don't think that. We're I talking think. about A or not A, okay? The law of excluded middle. Now, you said you're interested in philosophy. Right. See, okay, the... so we have two worldviews. We have the God world and the not God world. A, not A. Are we clear? What? We have two fundamental basic worldviews, the God world and the not God world. It's more okay? than not. There's more than that, and that's very. Sir, you're not. You're not under. You're. You're not. That is very reductionist. Okay. To, sir, sir, listen to me. To reduce philosophy to those what you are saying. Stop binaries. with the gobbledygook. Is, Stop with the gobbledygook. Do you not. accept the law of excluded middle? No. Oh, well, really? I told you, so, I'm, a, I'm a logical logic fact, which you call fact, I call false. So you don't accept. Okay? You don't accept the third law of the three laws of logic. Then. I told you I'm illogical. What is logic? Okay, okay, okay. Goodbye. Good. You're illogical. Goodbye. See you later. Yeah, we're not playing this game. Okay? He's illogical. <laughs> I agree with you. Where do they grow these people? Okay? Where do they grow these people? Okay? I mean, see... This is what they'll do, Theo. They will even argue and dispute things that really nobody with a sane mind uh, is um, going to 
going to going to reject. Um, JP, you sent me a message about my microphone. Are you talking about right now or a couple of minutes ago? Because a couple of minutes ago, I was using the microphone on my iPhone, and I then switched to my um, AirPod Pro earpiece and microphone. So if you could send me a message. If you like the sound quality now, that's the AirPod Pro microphone that's in the earpiece. Several minutes ago, before I put in my earpiece, it was the microphone for my iPhone. All right, let me check my messages. Well, I'm not sure which one you like better. Okay, yeah, that's because it's the microphone. Let me just turn off my fan. I had a fan on. Okay. Um, yeah, you should expect better microphone quality out of the out of the, the cell phone versus the microphone um, that's in the uh, Bluetooth headset because it's um, – you have bandwidth between the Bluetooth receiver – and it can only carry so much sound quality. Hopefully, in the next update of the AirPod Pros, they're going to have higher bandwidth, which I'm pretty confident that they're going to have a higher bandwidth situation. Um, I could use a wired microphone with my cell phone, which I'm probably going to do that in in the very in the near future. But I like the idea that I don't um, have to be wired up. Uh, go ahead, Human. Why are you an atheist? Hey, Darth, hey to you. Um, I'm actually not an atheist. Um, okay. But I like do you, af- do you Do you affirm the existence of God, sir? Yes, I do. Okay, which God do you believe in? I'm a Muslim, so... Um, I, I okay, well, well that's, that, 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 that's unfortunate. What country are you from? Uh, originally, I'm Iranian, but I'm living in Australia right now. Oh, okay. I hear a touch of an Australian. Yeah, well, you see, it's very easy if you are ruthlessly honest with yourself to study biblical Christianity and compare and contrast it to the doctrines and the tenets of Islam and see that Islam is just simply a derivational cult of Christianity that was invented by, by Muhammad. We can easily see and demonstrate this by showing the errors that Muhammad made in in the Quran, okay? So, for example, although he spoke of Allah in many superlative ways with the 99 names of Allah, Allah, what Muhammad didn't understand due due to his lack of sophistication theologically and philosophically is that his conception of God doesn't have all great making properties, okay? So, for example... Allah is not an always truth revealing and communicating God. Okay? It's clear in the Arabic. And this is troubling so much to Arabic translators of the Quran that they mistranslate the passages where it says Allah is the greatest of all deceivers. Okay? Now, do, are you fluent in Arabic? Well, no, you, you're probably fluent in Farsi, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. So the Quran in a number of places, specifies in the Arabic that Allah is the greatest of all deceivers. Now, I do understand that in certain languages, certain words, depending on context, can mean to strongly persuade, or in other contexts, it can mean to mislead or deceive. But these passages are not such cases. The Arabic word means to scheme, to deceive. I've looked it up. In, in Arabic lexicons, I've talked with people who are fluent uh, speakers, okay? Yep, uh, I, yeah, I, send I, me more information, JB. Yeah, send me more information, JB. Okay, so in order for there to be human intelligibility, um, yeah, well, send me the screen name, okay? Do, do check your history on that, JB. Um, in order for there to be in actuality, human reason, truth, and intelligibility, not just that we think we possess it, there must be certain preconditions 
uh, that must exist as real, without which we couldn't possess truth, reason, and intelligibility. And we have those characteristics in the God of the Bible. He's he's revealed it. Okay, so first and foremost, he he's always truth revealing. Although within the course of his plan of human redemption in history, he has permitted certain agents to deceive others as a form of temporal judgment. He himself does not actively deceive or exude falsehood, but the God of the Quran does. Okay. Uh, another issue is um, when when we look at the name Allah. Okay, it's rooted historically in in the Arabic term meaning the God. Okay, it was a generic term, but when Muhammad was asked what God's name was, he didn't have one, so he just said Allah. Okay, was was the name. Now he wasn't literate. Okay, he didn't read the Old or New Testament, and because the Jews would not pronounce the divine name in the Old Testament Y H W H, which they think is pronounced Yahweh, in all likelihood, Muhammad was not aware that God had the divine name Yahweh that was used over 5,000 times in the Old Testament. 5,000 times um, God refers to himself either directly or indirectly as Yahweh. Now, there are certain biblical characters in the Old Testament whose names incorporate the divine name such as Zechariah, Isaiah, Elijah, and, and others. And some of these biblical characters' names are repeated and transliterated over into the Quran. But there's no reference whatsoever in the Quran to the name of God that was used 5,000 times. So Allah has amnesia for his name in the Old Testament. Another issue is there, there's no plan of salvation in spite of what Muslims say. Okay. They just say, well, Allah just forgives. Okay, so okay, so they're, 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 there's no punishment for their sin. They just get off the hook. Another glaring issue is um, in Surah 4 and 5, we see at least three key passages which are referring to the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, condemning it. But when we look at how the Trinity is expressed – Right, Muhammad thought that the doctrine of the Trinity was Allah, Jesus, and Mary, but nobody ever taught that. Okay, so for example, in Surah Five, it says, "And when Allah will say to Jesus, did you say to the people to take you and your mother as deities alongside or besides me, Allah?" So the issue here was that in in this passage in the Quran, which when we read on. Um, uh, Jesus, according to Muhammad, denied doing that. So in that passage, what is being condemned is that the Christians were taking three gods rather than just one god, Allah. And then when we go back to chapter 4 and chapter 5 again, respectively, we find two more passages where the Trinity is even referenced more explicitly, where it says Allah is not the third of three. Or it'll say, and say not three. Allah is one God. And there's only three personas that are mentioned with the implication that they're characters that are deities. And those are Jesus and Mary. Now, if Mary was not in the mind of Muhammad as a part of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, why was she being mentioned in this way? And why is the third person of the Trinity conspicuously absent? So, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Islam is a derivational cult of Christianity by a guy in the 7th century Arabian Peninsula. And just like everyone else on the planet, if we turn our backs on Jesus Christ, when we die, we will be separated from God. And there is no hope without Jesus Christ. That simple. Would you care to respond? No, absolutely. Um, um Thanks, mate, for explaining this. I'm not in a position to respond to you because I'm not that good in terms of debating, and I don't have the. That's not, not that's perfectly honest. fine. And yeah, if you I disagree, to... that's fine. That's fine. So, yeah, I, don't I mind. really appreciate it, mate. No, that that's that that's fine. Okay, and if you yeah, disagree, we can talk about it some other time. Regarding the um, uh, God having mercy, I think this has been debated a lot as well, even in the clubhouse, but um. I, it's not that 
God's living for like everyone in every scenario. God, like our Allah will punish you based on what you've done and everything. But God's mercy coming first versus God's oh. wrath. So that, oh. that's how we see it. That's how we yeah. see it. Yeah, well, that that's but this is all derivative of Muhammad's uh, misunderstanding. When we look at the Old Testament and God's dealing with the nation of Israel, okay, God set up a, a his relationship with the Jewish nation, uh, a covenant relationship, okay, where he would be their king, and he would bless them if they obeyed the rules and statutes that he gave the nation of Israel, all right? Now, he pointed out, when you read the Old Testament, to the Jewish nation, if you sin, if you break these laws, then you are to bring animal sacrifices. And what God was doing within his covenant relationship with Israel was foreshadowing how he was going to ultimately bring about salvation by there being a substitutionary atonement that the animal sacrifices foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Those animal sacrifices only simply appeased God, okay, in terms of their temporal relationship with him as their king. But those animal sacrifices did not absolve their guilt before God as the eternal creator. And so Muhammad just completely ignores this and just said, oh, just become a dutiful Muslim and God will, and Allah will forgive you. Well, then why did Allah spend all this time with the nation of Israel having them do animal sacrifices? Okay. Well, it's obvious because he was just making it up as we go along. But uh, if, you have a, if you have a New Testament or if you have a phone or a computer, I'd like you to read the Gospel of John and then get back to us. Okay, so thank you for coming up and uh, joining us. Okay, so do we have any atheists who have the intestinal fortitude who would like to come up and tell us why atheism is coherent and rational? We find it very difficult to find intelligent, non-bickering non-teenage mentality atheists okay come on up google that's quite a screen name hello okay yes now for the sake of this for this discussion we are defining atheism as this under the standard definition which is there are no gods okay so are under that definition are you an atheist uh yes good so god does not exist because um, it's not necessarily does not exist. I'm not holding any position, but um, okay. sir, are you are you an atheist as we have defined it? Atheism is defined that there are no gods, and specifically means there is no supreme being, creator God. So, are you an atheist as we have defined it? So, okay, for me, uh, I don't believe in a god. You can start this way. Okay, sir, are you an atheist as we have defined it? I already gave you a different defi definition. Sir, we have defined atheism that there are no gods. Are you an atheist under that definition? No. Okay. Do you claim to merely have an absence of positive belief in God, whereby you suspend judgment as to the existence or non-existence of God? Um, I, I don't claim any position here. Okay, sir, do you suspend judgment? Do you affirm that God exists? Affirm that God exists? Yeah. Do you do that? No, I don't. Do you deny that God exists? I don't. Def uh, I don't affirm or deny. Good. Then you are. Then when you say I don't affirm or deny the existence of God, that is the same thing as saying you suspend judgment. Are we clear? Uh, I don't know what you mean by suspend judgment here. Suspend judgment is you are not making a judgment that either God does exist or you don't have the judgment that God does not exist. You are suspending either judgment. You are withholding judgment as to the affirmation that God exists, and you are withholding uh, affirmation that God does not exist. So you're claiming to suspend judgment. I think it's the same as I told you in the beginning. I don't hold any position. and, no, and Sir, sir, 
then you are claiming the classical position of agnosticism, that you uh, are not I making think... a judgment. Okay, uh, Agno excuse me. Agnosticism neither claims to neither affirm nor deny God's existence. Are we clear? Uh, I think I think uh, th this discussing this topic could be very simple, but you try. And, Can uh, you please answer my question? Do you understand agnosticism is the so, claim so, to neither affirm? Okay, goodbye. Hit the road. Okay, goodbye. All right. Okay, so this is these are questions that a twelve-year-old can answer. Okay. So if you can't answer the simple question, it's pointless to go on. And no, I'm not being impatient. I've been doing this for years. And if 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 if, if you can't answer that simple question, that you're that you are indeed suspending judgment by your neither affirming nor denying God, it's a simple question. Okay, it's uncontroversial, right? And you can't answer that simple question. Then I wonder if you can tie your shoelaces, okay? No, Petro, we're not doing this again. You don't know how to conduct yourself as an adult. You have to come back in. Uh. Put your hand down, Petro. See, I did. I shouldn't have even brought you up earlier, but I, out of out of the the kindness of my wondrous heart, I brought you up here. But again, <laughs> you troll. Okay, okay, Petro. If you don't put your hand down, I'm going to remove you. Okay. Put your hand down, Pedro, and then come back in in about 10 minutes. Oh, he turned off the hand raising. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> I can't even raise my hand now. I just checked my message, JB. Thank you for that information. Okay, so if we have any adult-minded atheists who want to come up and explain your atheism, you can raise your hand and come on up. Unfortunately, we can't find hardly any adult-minded atheists, which is a shame. But that's been going on for years. No, Petro, I'm not. Um, no, Petro, I'm not mean. I just don't put up with nonsense. I've been doing this for 12 years, okay? And I try to bend over backwards being patient with, with people that are not understanding certain things. But when somebody has a pattern of misbehavior like you have, Petro, that's the treatment you get, Okay. And I'm unashamed in dealing with people like this way. I'm not. I'm not putting up with this garbage. Okay. I I deal with people that are just outright deceitful unbelievers on a regular basis. Once they make it crystal clear to me that that's their shtick, I'm done. Okay. I do happen to have occasionally. Long, fruitful disagreements and debates with certain unbelievers who are mature-minded, who don't want to sit there and deploy obfuscation, misdirection, prevarication, deceit, right? Double talk, bickering, right? But most of them deploy that because they've got nothing else. I see, uh, um, um, well, Dre, um, is he still here? Yeah, uh, yeah he, he's still here. Um, it probably wouldn't go well, um, because Matt Lobloviator is used to running his own ship and running roughshod over people. And, um, because much of what comes out of his mouth is sophism. He would he would be very quickly get agitated when I would annihilate 
you know, his atheist cliches. I mean, this is this is a guy who uh, he defines atheism as a lack of belief in God. This is the level of sophistication that we're dealing with. But uh, if it was just the two of us, it probably would not go. It probably would not go well. Look, uh, look how well it happens with the rank and file atheists. You know, yeah, Matt Delahunty, Matt De La uh I should say, um, is just a cliche atheist, cliche spewing machine, and he's not very good at it. Um, well, he could, but you see. As a Bible-believing Christian, I don't obfuscate or prevaricate, but th this is what the atheists do regularly, right? Why do, why do you think the, uh, the clown car posse from the Atheist Church of Austin don't show up on Clubhouse? Why do you think they don't show up on Discord, right? Because they want to be able to completely control the narrative. Okay? That's that's what you do when your your whole rationale is cliche driven. Um, I used to regularly years ago, and I still occasionally go into these atheist strongholds. But inevitably, they just allow trolling, bickering, dogpiling, and just so it's, they use it as a tactic. You know, let, let's take Matt Slick as an example who has debated uh, Matt the Liberal Theater. Um, you know, Matt has done numerous formal debates, but he also shows up on a regular basis on Discord, on Clubhouse. Why don't we see Matt DeLaBloviator do that? Because he can't control the narrative. Because if he gets into a difficult philosophical situation with somebody who knows their sub, you know, he, he can always bloviate and rabbit trail because he controls the microphone. Petro, this is against my better judgment, but I'll bring you up one more time, give you another chance, but you better conduct yourself like an adult, okay? Okay? Hey. Yeah, it is impossible to refute God because refuting would be the product of reason, and God would have to be, get, exist as the ultimate precondition of everything, including truth and reason and intelligibility. Okay. Right. So, so we agree what, on that. The, so we, we agree on that, I guess. Right. Yeah. See, that's why I say philosophy, science cannot disprove God. Right. The answer, I mean, most philosophers have been cheerleaders for Christianity, especially in German, you know, up to Kant until Nietzsche. Right. Uh, that's why I go back to you know, history, archaeology, and also psychology, like the human psychology. So how we kind of, you know... How does anything, how, how is any of that meaningful Because, because if I see the origins of Christianity... Hold on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on a second, hold on a second, okay? With all these subject matters that you're bringing up, you are invoking that there are various categories of unity among the diversity of things that are in the set of all real things, right? No, what I mean is, if we go back to... You didn't, you, origin, didn't under, you, didn't, you didn't understand what I just said, did you? Because that's not the point that I'm making. Because so, you need to so understand so my other point. Words, so, so other no, but did you other understand words, my point? You're, I, you are going to see what you're doing again, what you usually do. Now you're bickering with me. I asked you a legitimate question. You started to invoke these vari various categories of study, right? 
Now, I ask you, I said, when you invoke these various categories, you are exemplifying areas of unity among the diversity of all the set of all real things. That was a legitimate question, sir, and you dodged it. Now, are you going to answer the question? That's not how we do this. Did you not invoke certain categories? I didn't. Okay, that's a lie. Did you not invoke science? Did you not invoke archaeology? Did you not invoke psychology? Well, these are different categories. Are different, these categories different at schools. all? Are they categories? What? That's just... That's just Pichu. words. Category. What do you mean by that? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Goodbye, Pietro. You're doing okay. You cannot handle it. Hit the road, Jack. Okay. Now you're, okay. Now you're bad. You already. Who's? You're gonna do it again. You're gonna do it again. You see, he can't help himself. You see, when you when you start asking them very clear and narrowly formulated questions that are germane to what they say, but they're very uncomfortable in answering the question because it will reveal what they really think or that they're afraid of what the implications are, they dodge. And that's exactly what he was doing. And this isn't the first time he's done it. He does it every time I bring him up here. He said he wasn't invoking categories, and he was. So archaeology, science, psychology, these are not categories. Yeah. Yeah, these are not – um, No. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Everybody heard his line. He was straightforward line. Okay, he most certainly was invoking categories because categories are concept of unity among diversity. Okay, so if I talk about humans, that's a category. Yeah. Among the diversity of particulars in the set of all real things, or if we talk about cars, that's a category, right? Or if we talk about archaeology, that's a category. Right. If we talk about science, meaning empirical endeavors, right, using our physical senses and extensions of our senses in order to figure out how certain things happen, this is another category, right? And the guy outright lied that he was invoking categories when he was, okay, because he was uncomfortable in answering the questions. But uh, people who are unsure whether you can be sure about anything. A question the use of words or <laughs> any manner of things, they still are very sure about being offended about you first ceasing the conversation with them when they question the use of words or being sure about anything. They're very sure in their opinions about me. Okay? You see, yeah, what you they want to do is they want to go, oh, I don't have enough information about God. I, I just don't know, right? But, but they're sure about other things that they can speak intelligibly about some things. Well, can you speak intelligibly about some things in the world if there's no categories or unity among the diversity of all real things? Right? You see, they don't want to answer that. Sure that I'm offended at you, and I'm sure that I know the words I'm using to express my offense. But other yeah. than yeah, the... yeah, yeah. But uh, as per your your messages to me, don't let your heart be worried about that little um troll. Okay. When you're on the internet, well, it's funny when people will make an account, and then a few days later they'll be doing uh, out of context attacks against someone, and then trying to change their name the yeah. next day. Yeah. Look, when you have, when I have thousands and thousands of people who listen to my interactions because we have other people that are trying to record my conversations. Out of all the many thousands of people listen to, you're going to have a small handful of people that are going to develop a fetish. Eyesed obsession with yours truly. Okay? It's it's inevitable when you have a large population of people. So it, well, the, it is what it is. They're just look. They're, these are just weird people. But the irony of stuff like that is very much in parallel with the atheists doing rooms all day long about how much they hate God that they claim doesn't exist. Uh, interesting. Well, yeah. Well, 
You have to understand that for most of them, most of them have a history in some type of religious fundamentalism. And for most of them, in my biased opinion, it's an emotional issue. Okay? And it's also a moral issue. Now, is this universally true? No. But what is universally true about all of them, what they all have in common, and what drives them, which I call the prime directive, to use a Star Trek metaphor, is their bitter clingers to their personal autonomy. Because the only alternative to believing that your mind is autonomous is to believe in the autonomous mind of God as supreme being and creator. So if one refuses for whatever rationale to believe in God as supreme being, creator, the autonomous mind, the only alternative is to accept the autonomy of the human mind, that the human mind just simply exists and operates as is without the necessity of deriving or dependence from the autonomous mind of God. And so because they cling to that, when the issue of God comes up, right, God represents to them not merely an entity, but that God is their creator. And if God is defined categorically as their creator, that will ipso facto make them culpable and accountable. It's that simple. And they don't want to be a creature. They don't want to be accountable. And so that is their driving principle of preserving at all costs, including logic and reason, their autonomous reasoning. And they then, through a process of confirmation bias, collect all sorts of cliches. <laughs> platitudes, sloganeerings, and fallacious reasoning as to why it simply isn't necessary to believe in God. Now, I, I can demonstrate this morning, noon, and night. Like, for example, when when I spoke to Lawrence Krauss, the atheist firebrand, uh, when he was speaking in an AMA, he just was vehement that we don't need God. God isn't necessary. We can explain everything through the laws of nature. And he was emphatic about this. But when I asked him, how is it that God doesn't exist, he immediately started to go in reverse and was claiming that he wasn't openly asserting that God doesn't exist, but that's just that there's insufficient grounds to positively believe that. But when you state, we don't need God, that is the same thing as saying God doesn't exist. Because God, by definition, as, as the supreme being and creator of all things that are not himself, definitionally is the necessary precondition of all things. And if you say we don't need God, then God as defined as the necessary precondition of all things that are not himself doesn't exist. So, you see, even the professional atheists, even those who have PhDs, are devious and deceitful, Right? Now, when the professional PhD atheists are devious and deceitful, then why should we expect people who don't have academic achievements and credentials to have a higher standard of discourse? You know, I make no bones about it. Every unbeliever out there to the extent that they're acquainted with God's revelation of himself, either in creation and in through human history, through the Bible, through Jesus Christ, to one degree or another, are lying to themselves. Well, some of them are worse than others, but it's true of all of them. Okay? Because the denial of the existence of God cannot be instantiated. It cannot be successfully defended. Like, for example, when I talk with Graham Oppie, although it didn't last very long because the host didn't want Graham Oppie to be asked questions that was uncomfortable even as a professional philosopher and atheist to answer, he tried to make this idea that naturalism is a more parsimonious explanation. But implicit in what he was saying is that materialism or naturalism as a more parsimonious explanation to God and the natural world was coherent. And intelligible. And when I want to inquire of him, how is it intelligent? Where do you, how do you instantiate the realness of unity among the diversity of things other than the fact that you believe it? And the professional philosopher's answer was, I see books on my shelf. That was his answer. 
see, I mean, you you would think that somebody who is a professional philosopher, like um, Graham Offee, and look, the guy's a really smart guy. I have some of his books. I'm reading one of his books on atheism right now. I can tell by reading it, the guy's really smart. And even though I disagree with him, I'm actually enjoy reading his book because he's a, he's a really smart guy. And he's not the, your usual, you know, knuckle dragging firebrand a- atheist out there. But he's engaging in the same mistakes that all atheists make. He's adopting a model of reality that is just simply indefensible as a line of reasoning against the God world and that God's revealed himself. Okay, so do we have any unbelievers, any atheists who would like to come up and explain why your unbelief or atheism is meaningful, it's rational, it's defensible? Raise your hand and come on up. Uh, we, we really can't seem to find too many. Now, I've gone into some of the atheist rooms, I went in one today, and immediately, you know, they start they start controlling tactics. One atheist said to me, well, I don't believe there's anything absolute and ultimate. Well, then, good, then you have no basis to say anything then. If there's nothing absolute or ultimate, then what does it mean to say the grass blows in the wind? Is, it, is grass the same thing that it was 10 seconds ago, and what, what makes it that way? Is the causal principle real? Is identity over time real? And what imposed that? Is there something absolute? Or is the causal principle something that just seems to be that way, but it's not that way? Or is it something that may have been true in the past, but just appears to be this way now, but it, but isn't? But there's nothing that actually ultimately imposes that. I mean, I mean these people have to answer these questions. If you're going to sit there and shake your this up at the sky at God, proverbial speaking, and lift your middle finger and say, I don't need no stinking God, you better be prepared to answer these sorts of questions. But they don't want to answer these questions, do they? All right, come on up. And by the way, I used to try to get into these atheist chat shows on YouTube. Um, but at, after I would call into them and I would be stifled, I would be muted, I would be verbally abused. It's pointless trying to get in through to these people. Uh, go, to he- go ahead, Caleb. Oh, wow. Thank you. That was fast. Um, uh, the title of the room, um, Why Are You an Atheist? Um, basically, my, my reason is twofold. Uh, the first one is I think that um, people just made up God as a concept uh, to explain reality. And second, um, does, that justify, think that's does true. that justify the statement there is no God? No, but uh, that's one of the reasons okay, why well, then, I'm then an that, atheist. Then that, then that doesn't answer the question. Well, atheism. Why am I an atheist? The that's standard just... definition. The standard definition of atheism is that there are no gods. Do you use the standard definition? Um, sure. Yeah, I, I suppose you could put okay, me in a hard so, camp if okay, that's... Okay, that's so, so, so under that definition, specifically then, you would hold to there is no supreme being creator god. So, god does not exist because... Um, the idea of god seems superfluous. Uh, I, I don't see a reason. Okay, okay. when you say it's superfluous, okay, so yeah. when you say God doesn't exist because it seems superfluous, to say that God is superfluous, you're saying God is not necessary, right? Sure. And that's good. Yeah, that's if good. you say God is not necessary, that is the same thing as saying God doesn't exist. Which is my position, so, yeah. Right, but you see, all it is is a recapitulation of the same position without telling me why that's the case. Um, to say that it's superfluous is to say if you say God is not right? necessary, okay. Just so we're clear on this, okay. And you seem so far like a straight shooter, and I appreciate that. Um, when you say God is not necessary, you do understand that God is defined as being the necessary precondition. And so, if if you say God is not necessary. That is equivalent to saying God doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay, so it's not answering the question why God doesn't exist. So either your 
position, your position will be one of two things. Either what is ultimate, that is not God, is impersonal, or that there is nothing ultimate at all, at all from which all things derive and depend. So which of those two scenarios do you use in order to invoke that God isn't necessary? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I think it might be a bit okay, well then, 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 then your assertion that God is superfluous is simply an empty claim. It's simply a recapitulation that God does not exist, but in different words. Okay, when Lawrence Krauss, were you listening when I was jabbering about Lawrence Krauss? No, actually, I just I just topped in, and you said uh, okay, if you're an okay. atheist, feel free to Okay, so, so I was jabbering about Lawrence Krauss. Do you know who Lawrence Krauss is? I'm familiar with him, yeah. Okay, he wrote the book, The Universe from Nothing. He's a foaming-at-the-mouth, rabid atheist, okay? Uh, that's that's my take on it. Um, he was uh, rambling about we don't need God. God is not necessary. We can explain everything through the laws of nature. Okay, those Good at knitting. Bad at building reptiles. It was my turn to speak with them. Oh, the and I, I asked them this question. Um, when I asked him how is it that God doesn't exist, he denied denying the God. Well, no, like I said, I, I don't accept their information. I then said to him, uh, Dr. Krauss, if my memory serves me correctly, because there's a number of PhD atheists that I talked to, so hopefully I don't conflate my interactions. I said, Dr. Krauss, what is it that is ultimate and fundamental that institutes and secures every instance of what is, can be, and cannot be? And his response was, I don't know. Why does it even matter? Well, if what is ultimate or fundamental, which dictates every instance of what is, can be, and cannot be, is unknown and unidentifiable, then how could he possibly rationally say God is needed? He couldn't, right? And at that well, point, I when that... I asked a question, let me just finish. At that point, when I asked a question, he got pissed. He was angry. He got agitated, and the host quickly got rid of me from the conversation, thus... Krauss be further embarrassed. Okay. Right. Well, um, I think that, I mean, if you if you say that God is like the fundamental thing responsible for all things, um, including space, time, and matter, and all that, and so if if that's what you want to call God, I, I do think that there is something that okay. um, well, well, um, space, time, and matter is dependent on that isn't space, time, and matter. Yeah, but here's the I don't think that that's a person, but if you want to call that God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Well, but you that see, God, by definition, is defined as being an agent, a persona. If it is with the there go, we have the superfluous part. I don't think that it's necessary for that thing to be a person, okay. even though that okay, thing well, might exist. Here's the problem. Okay. So, so, okay, so when you say God isn't necessary, you're, you're just saying God doesn't exist. Okay. I'm saying, no, 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 I, I said I agree that this thing might exist, but I don't think that this thing is a person. Okay, and what is your rational grounds to invoke that which is ultimate is impersonal? Um, the, the, well, so my view of reality uh, is that um, I, I believe in the B theory, and all things just are, and uh, always have been, always will be. And uh, so whatever that emergent thing is, okay. doesn't do you believe, need to okay. do anything in the, in beyond the B, exist. In the B theory of time, is there a plurality of things, or is reality one single concrete thing, or is reality composed of an of a abstract set of concrete particulars? Abstract set of concrete. Yeah, if I say like a, a, a number of say, things, is that a way of saying it? There's, there's a, a particular number of things. So, because I think there's a finite amount of stuff. Okay. When we say you just, you just think that there's reality there without God. So, do you believe that there's a plurality of discrete things out there? That there are two or more things? Oh, if that's this, yeah, that's yeah, uh, uh, clearly. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, here's the problem. Okay. And the way to understand this problem is you always want to juxtapose your conceptualizing of this model of reality in contrast to the Christian worldview. 
in the Christian worldview, we have God who is ultimate and absolute, and a mind who institutes all of the particularity that we call creation. And he just doesn't institute all of these particulars, whatever they may be at their lowest level. He also imposes various levels of unity and categories. Okay? So we have unity and diversity. And because we have unity and diversity, we now can have a coherent and intelligible world that we speak of. Okay? Now, since you don't believe God is the institutor and imposer of the unity and diversity, but you do believe that the unity and diversity is real. So I want to know is what makes the unity among the diversity of things real? <laughs> because if you're hol if you're holding to the act the realness of the unity among the diversity of things in violation of your criterion of belief, then you cannot invoke it. So is the unity, the categoryness among the diversity of things in the in the world real without God? Um, I suppose it depends. Okay. I mean, that's more of a good, philosophical good. question. I'm not really sure to answer that. I mean, because if um, if all things are fundamentally the same thing, you you, maybe you believe I couldn't you make believe, that statement, right? You no, you 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 believe that naturalism or materialism, if I'm not misrepresenting to you, is a intelligible alternative to the God world, right? Sure. Yeah. Good. So. I'm challenging that view that naturalism is coherent at all. So in your naturalistic or materialistic framework, your model of reality, where you have an array of particulars, right, whatever they may be, that there is are categories of things of unity and diversity. There's regularity amongst irregularity. There's continuity along with discontinuity. Okay? Now, are those things real? Sure. Because, yeah. Okay, and, and if, if the continuity and the unity among diversity were not real, you you and I would not be able to actually speak intelligibly about anything in our world. But you believe that the unity and continuity among the diversity of things is real without God. So what makes that unity real? I don't know how to answer to that, to be honest. Um, it, so, it sounds so, like right. it would, okay. Uh, let me let me see if I understand though, because it, I, I might I might not simply understand what you're asking. Um, uh, it sounds like what you're asking me is okay. How is it that you can explain that there is more than one type of thing? Is that what you're asking me? Under under a naturalistic worldview, if I if I say to you, there are two dogs in my front yard. Okay, the word dogs. The number two and the word yard all are expressions of categories of things and unity among diversity. Right? There's there's yeah. dogness, there's two-ness, right? And there's yardness. Okay. Now, you believe that in your world that you're not God world, we make we could call it naturalism or materialism, physicalism, whatever. You believe that this is more parsimonious, that it's 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 appealing, right? You feel, well, I don't see a reason to believe in God and I just have the natural world. Okay? So you are believing in the natural world without God. Yeah. I want to see if that's coherent. Okay? Okay. Now, in the Christian worldview, which is the only worldview that I and other Christian defenders support, okay. God is the necessary precondition for everything, including truth, reason, intelligibility, unity among diversity, continuity, discontinuity. However, you want to describe these. God is. So the you're one. saying is that? So you're saying that that includes just the ability, in principle, to categorize things. Yeah, God. Okay. The mind, the mind, the purpose, and the plan of God is what we could call the concrete universal from which all things derive and depend. Now, when you reject that scenario, that model of reality, for whatever reason, you are going to be adopting an alternative worldview, usually expressed, but not always, as naturalism or materialism. And you think that it is at least intelligible. 
to a certain. Well, I have point. a question about the intelligible what you just said, though. You, you said that God is responsible for the ability for such a thing as categorization to exist. So, um, is that to say that if God were to, in theory, make more than one type of thing, but didn't invent the ability to categorize things, that there wouldn't actually be more than one type of thing? Repeat the question. Okay, so if God is responsible for the, um, in principle, the ability to categorize things, is it possible then for God to make more than one kind of thing, but not create the ability to categorize said things? That's a good question. Um, let me think about that. That's a very good question. Um, well... Let, let, let's say God were to create two discrete things, okay? So there's God and these, these two things. They would still be within the, they would still be categorized because they would be creaturely. So I don't believe, and, and, and Matt, yes, sir, if you want to jump on this uh, or join in, sure. please feel free. I don't believe that it would be possible for God to create any plurality of things without him them being uh, of some category. Okay? We still have a creator, creator distinction. Creator What's creation. That? Yeah. Yeah, I got two yeah. categories of created or uh, creator and creature or creator and creation distinction right, right there. Yeah, so it, by, by virtue of God creating he is imposing categoryness. Yeah, you're saying that that's an option. That uh, okay, okay. all right. Let me let me let me let me illustrate this way. And by by the way, listen to me. You and I aren't agreeing on certain things, but I want to tell you, I always stop when I'm dealing with somebody like you who is displaying a very mature and intelligent approach, but where we're not agreeing and compliment. So I appreciate your disposition and the way you're conducting yourself. We don't see this usually. We usually see unbelievers and atheists who display, you know, 15-year-olds with ADD who didn't take the Ritalin. But you are <laughs> – conduct. see, I, I always like to stop and compliment people. I'm not brown-nosing here. Right? I, wish, I wish we had more people like you. Okay? So, so getting back to it. So let's say God creates a blue blue and a kerflunkel. Okay, a je blue blue and a clerk uncle. Okay, in spite of me telling you anything about them, they would still be within a category because there would now be the creator and the creation categories. So they couldn't escape categorization. Yeah, and see, I think that that's the thing that I agree with you on. That I hope that we can kind of find the common ground with because I think that that is just a, by virtue of reality that God can't impose on even. Like, that, that's oh, just a okay, fact well, that, of reality. That, well, no, 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 no. See, now, the mistake you're making here is we're no longer talking about God now. Okay? Well, I agree. Sure. Because, because reality is – how should I put this to you? Um, the term reality is an abstraction attempting to uh, place within a mental set certain concrete particulars. Now, God by definition, if he's God, the supreme being the creator, is not and could not be subject to any external or independent parameter. Okay. Is are we making the exception of the creator creation distinction though? Yeah. If, or are you saying that even yeah, God if, could if you, void that? If distinction? you if you if you say, if you communicate in whatever words you choose that God is subject to one or more parameters, then we're no longer talking about the creator creature distinction. You're now talking about God as no longer being ultimate, meaning that all things derive and depend upon him. Now we have a Which God I think is the goal, though, may, so because no, what we're talking see, about... But hold on a second, hold on a second. Now you're talking about a God that coexists with something else. In 
and then he decides to make the world, but he doesn't control everything. He doesn't create everything. Okay. Well, and, he, and, he, um, and, and he himself is subject to at least one thing. But that, then, then we're no longer talking about God in terms of the creator-creature distinction. Yeah, we're dualist in one sense, but not in that yeah. sense. There's no yeah. call, yeah. co-ultimacy. We're just talking about a dualistic metaphysic of creator and yeah. creation, eternal and finite. Yeah. You might be, he might be God in the sense of a Greek philosophy where he's the prime mover, but he's not God in terms of the creator-creature distinction. Right. Now, the point, the point is here, okay? You believe that there's no God, that God's not necessary. So what is the rationale that God does not exist, okay? Now, just simply telling me, well, there's the natural world, well, where'd you come up with that universal – and how how is it even intelligible? What what actually makes any unity among diversity real? So you have you have a multiple problems here, instantiating oh, yeah, that's, that's the, the, univer the universal that all of these particulars exist with independence from God. You're going to have to defend that universal, and then you're going to have to explain how all the particulars within the set and as a set are intelligible. What, sure. what 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 unified anything? Um, again, I think that there is um, a, a, an ultimate, as you call it, um, the distinction between our worldviews. Um, at the end of the day, is that this thing uh, is a person that chooses certain things that uh, manifest in reality. Whereas wait, I wait think minute, that this thing, you believe that there's an ultimate, but it's not a mind. It's not an agent. Okay. Now, how are you able to instantiate? That, that is. I'm sorry. Other than the fact, other than the fact that you verbalize it, how do you instantiate that there is something that's ultimate from which all things that are not itself derive and depend upon, and that it's impersonal? How do you account that it actually is? How do you? Uh, well, um, it's it's a complex question. That's that's that's, that's a good question. Uh, it's, well. a, it's actually a simple question. How so? What do you mean by what? Maybe if you said to me, if you said to me, how do you account for what is ultimate and is an a, a persona and agent that we call God? I said, well, it's very simple. He constructed the world in such a way as to reveal himself that he is, as opposed to he created the world and he didn't reveal himself. Well, that's fine. But if I were to say the same thing, that um, this thing really did the world in such a way that we are capable and, and of making distinctions. Where, 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 You're going to ask me, how is that, that possible? Where, right. no, 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 no. I'm not going to ask you how it's possible. I'm going to say, where'd you get that from? Do, do, you, do you mean as an idea? So you're, so you're telling me, you're telling me that there is, a, there is an ultimacy from which all things derive and depend. It's impersonal. It's not an agent. And so how do you know it's there? Um, it's this idea of um, emergent space-time that uh, seems to be rather No, no, uh, no, no, no. How popular. do you know that it's there? Oh, I have – I don't it, – it, like, no, no, if you're asking me if I'm certain that such a thing. I think that it's more likely than not. Absolutely. I, no, I think no, it's no, like absurd no, to no, think. no, no, no. That's a category error that you just committed, Okay. Because what is ultimate itself is not subject to probabilistic or contingent situations. You're committing. Well, a I'm not saying that my my opinion of it is is dictating whether or not it's you are asserting not, I, it's there or it's not. not I'm, you're I'm, asserting right. God does not exist because what is ultimate is not a mind. So I'm asking you to instantiate that. Okay. How did you arrive? By what means were you able to determine that there is indeed something ultimate and that it's impersonal? How did you arrive at that? Well, at the end of the day, um, just, to, just to cut to the chase, um, I think that um, essentially um, – there's some nuance here, but I'm cutting to the chase. Pretty much any possible possibility comes uh, exists. Um, it, it just does. So if, you're not if, addressing if that's the, the question. Case, I hold on. Just let me let me if if you don't mind, I, I can I can I can tell you how this ties in here. Um, and so if if it is the case that all things that could be are, um, then we don't need a mind 
to make that happen. What we need is an on-off switch because those things either are or aren't. Or it could be the case that me, something pick and choose me. from that, but I don't believe that there's just you're, a limited number. Still, I think that you're just you're just monologuing at this point. You're not answering my question. How did you I mean, arrive that there is an ultimate and that it's impersonal? How again, did you come to that? How, by yeah, what means did you come to that conclusion? I my conclusion is that all possible possibility exists. No, sir. No, no, that's, that's, listen, that's not my conclusion. What, it, what, it, what is, what is possible, what is, can be, and cannot be, will be dictated. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't necessarily claim to know everything that's possible. And again, I think sir, there's sir, a finite amount of stuff. Listen, so there's a, listen, there's a limiting listen, you're, force. Look, you're a nice This is a complex listen, question, and I'm trying to answer the, the question. Right. Let me ask yeah. you a question. Do you know what your mother's middle name is? Actually, hold on. Maybe I don't. I don't think I do, actually. I don't. Do you know what your brother or sister's middle name is, if you have one? Yes. I know my brother and my sister. How did you come to know what their middle name actually is? Uh, I share one with my brother, so that one's very easy to remember. Was it communicated um, to you? I've, among Yeah, and I've seen it. As well, okay. as first, like, just How did you come like to that. know that there is something ultimate from which all things universally derive and depend, and that it's impersonal? How did you come okay. to know? I, that I, I that's what you're so I became convinced through the um, by just as an outside blame and observer, mind you, not as somebody like uh, who's in the field, but by professionals in the field of physics, uh, that yes. Um, it seems to be the case that all possible possibilities exist. That's what uh, yeah, uh, convinced yeah. me of. You know, that you know world is. Can I just finish the sentence and then I promise I'll be done? You that world where all possible possibilities exist is is fine, and and, I, and a mind could exist there, but it's superfluous, and that was why I think it's not necessary. It's doing? superfluous. Do you know what you're doing right now? And I'm done. Do you know what I was you trying just to get did? to the end of the sentence? Yeah. Do you know what you just did? Okay. I was trying you to get to the end of the sentence. Yeah. You were, a, you were asked a straightforward question multiple times. The answer you gave is indistinguishable from the answers that these young female beauty pageants give when they, a, they ask a question that they don't know the answer. They fake it. Well, you weren't answering why I believe what I believe. I don't know how else to answer you. You, you, you never why was, I believe it. You just rambled. You weren't. You were pretending to answer. How did you come to know by what means that there is indeed – a, a ultimate that everything universally derives and depend upon it, and by what means did you come to know that it's that it is and that it's impersonal? By what means? It was a grueling process of uh, again as an outside observer. It was, was a dark, doing my best night. to understand. It was a dark and stormy night. It was a grueling process. Mm -hmm. it, okay. The wind was, was blowing on the, the conversation a little. The wind was you know, blowing on the shutters. Really it was a dark and stormy night. Okay, but uh, well, I, see, I'm trying. I don't understand because you're asking me to tell you how it is that I came to believe this, right? Is that your question? Do you believe that men landed on the moon? Yes. How did you come to arrive at that belief? Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, yes, for sure. Um, I became convinced of that through a very similar process, whereby, as an outside observer, layman who's not an expert in the field, um, decided to uh, judge. The body of work available to me, and decide for myself. And I think that yes, I went to the. Moon. How did you? How did you come to know that it is the case that there is something that is ultimate, from which all things universally derive and depend, and that it's impersonal? By what means were you able to discover that? Okay, um, just a minor distinction. I don't claim to know it. I claim to believe it. So, I, in other words, I think that it is the case. Okay, but a I don't distinction think without that. a difference. Knowledge is a subset of belief. By what? By what and means? And there's a difference with the distinction. Believe, how did you come to believe that that's the case? I don't know how to explain it any further. I, 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 I that as an outside without, observer, I observed the, the body of work available to me and made a conclusion. Are you? A, are conclusion. you? A, are you? Are you a lawyer for corporations? No, I'm just a lowly piano technician. You, 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 you missed your calling. Okay. 
You would, you would make a great corporate leader. They need people like you to answer questions in Congress, pretending to answer. I don't know how more clearly answering. to answer your question of Sir, how it is that I came to believe what, is the what I believe. the rational basis behind your belief that there is something ultimate, universally, that everything derives from and that it's impersonal? What is the rational justification for that belief? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna repeat myself so many times. So you, so you don't. I have so you, to be done here because no, I'm not gonna do that. you don't have one that. because you didn't give me an answer. What the rational basis is? Were you able to come to a rational belief that there is something ultimate by virtue of your sense perception? Well, I had no choice but to use my sense perception. So how yeah, did your sense yeah. perception? How did your sense perception verify that there is indeed something ultimate? <laughs> that's that's an odd question. Um, no, I know. It's 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 how, how is that not an question? obvious? See, now understand. what you're doing, you are doing what I say people do. Okay, that the unbelievers that I deal with are dishonest to one degree or another. And uh, when the question you're asking me, when how is it that may I, I finish, may I finish, please? When yeah, the questions sure. reach a certain point, the unbeliever, such as yourself, tries to engage in obfuscation, rabbit trailing, and monologuing, and dodging the question. And that is precisely what you're doing right now. I said to you, how did you rationally come to believe that there is indeed something that is ultimate, that all things universally derive and depend upon? What's the rational basis for that? And you respond by saying, well, that's an odd question. Well, I mean... That's a dodge. Is there a rational basis behind your belief that there is indeed something ultimate that all things universally derive and depend upon? Do you have a rational basis for that? Uh, the, the, again, uh, the only reason that I think that it's more likely than not is because um, I think that the concept of emergent space time is more likely than not. Sir, sir, so you're, I believe you're, it on those grounds. If, if you want me to explain that further, um, it has quite a bit to do with black holes. Yeah. You're not okay. Okay, so so now you're purposely being deceitful. Because how you so? know – how so? Because I'm an intelligent, an intelligent adult. You know and you know that I know that you're purposely obfuscating. You're not addressing the issue. The well, issue honestly, is not – Honestly, I was just trying to, to avoid listen, a conversation listen, about listen black holes me. and information theory listen, listen to talk to me. about listen, whether listen, or not God exists. Black holes or cotton candy at, at the local 4-H fair okay, is not the issue. The issue is I want to know how did you rationally come to the conclusion that there is an ultimate that all things universally derive from and that it's not God because you said God's not necessary. So how did you rationally justify – how did you come to rationally believe that there is an ultimate and that it's impersonal? All right. Um, I came to believe that there was an ultimate again. Because I think that there is something ultimately responsible for all space, time, and matter. I agree on that point. What's the um, rationale behind that? Uh, probably for the same similar reasons that you have. Uh, that space, time, and matter probably more likely no, came sir, from something. No, sir. My position is that I, I believe that what it, No, sir. My I'm position sorry, that there is an ultimacy that is an agent and a mind that it is taking the initiative, the God of the Bible – to construct the world in such a way that all the facts are revelatory of an indicative him, of him by his purpose. So you didn't arrive at the same way, okay? Because said similar. My, my, my invoking the universal concrete of the, the supreme being, the creator, the God of the Bible, is by virtue of him taking the initiative by choice – to disclose his existence, but that is not the same way that you have arrived allegedly rationally at your belief that there is something that's ultimate that's impersonal. So yeah. impersonal, um, the impersonal, yeah, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. the impersonal part, admittedly, and I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. This is big bone to throw out there, um, is an assumption by virtue of the fact that I believe. That um, a universe wherein all possible possibility exists and a mind exists that is responsible for it and one that – where a mind isn't responsible for it, we just need an on-off switch. The mind being responsible for that, it, it seems superfluous to me. 
Like, if, if, I, if a non muscle can do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter that something seems to be a certain way. Did it not seem for several thousand years that the sun orbited the Earth? Telling me something seems that way does not answer the question. What well, I you're asking know, me why I believe. I want so to know how, whether or not first, first, first of it all, seems that way to when, use. When you, say, when, you, when you say that all things universally do not derive from an ultimate mind, and it seems that way, is another dodge. It doesn't answer the question. How does it no, seem that No, it's an honest way? answer to the question. I, that's what I believe okay. because okay. that's, it, that, it, that's it my bias. That way. Good. So how does it seem that there's an ultimate and that it's impersonal? How? How does it seem that way? Okay. Um, the, um, the, uh, uh, okay. To put it very, very simply, um, the idea that there's a thing that is responsible for creating every possible possibility seems very likely to me. I agree. But the, the idea that given that all possible possibility either exists or it doesn't under my particular uh, 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 paradigms and um, my, my train of thought that gets me to this point, um, it seems more likely that it just it, happened by virtue of the fact that it exists. There's you're no making a needed. You're making you're making a category error, and you're simply repeating the same thing. You're just saying it's not needed. But how did you come to the conclusion that it's not needed? Well, you told me it's because it's not needed because there is an ultimate that is impersonal from which all things universally derive and depend. How did you rationally come to believe that? You have yet to answer that. Excuse me. I think that I, I've answered to the best of my ability, and if that doesn't satisfy you, I'm no, sorry. No, you but haven't. I think no, that we've reached a, an impasse you at have, this point. I you think. have you have attempted to filibuster your way out of answering the question, which well, you have I'm not sorry answered. You're that way, I was just trying to have a conversation with you. I, I think no, you expect think to change me in this conversation. Listen, no, no, I'm not trying to change you. What I am attempting to show you that your not God world rationale is incoherent on your own terms. Because unless I do that first, unless I destroy your speculations and your belief system that you lift above the knowledge of God as the creator, unless I do that first, I cannot therefore present to you Jesus Christ as your only hope, not only as your savior to escape the wrath that is to come, but he's your only hope for human reason, truth, and intelligibility. So I have to first bring you to a crisis point that your system on your own terms, by your own criterion and standards, is hopelessly absurd and incoherent. You have not answered the question. What do you what do you mean incoherent? You, you keep saying it's your, incoherent. Your, your, your position, your mm -hmm. model of reality, listen to me carefully. Your model of reality has no identifiable, defensible, concrete universal. By concrete universal, I mean an ultimacy of reality from which all things universally derive and depend. You haven't answered the question how that I think exists. I have, and I, I want to – and, and you're saying it, that it's how incoherent, how it's right? right? How, well, well, it's, well, first of all, it's, it's incoherent in the sense that your view of naturalism has and nothing – I want to I I I I unload please? that word. Can you – well, I, I it's finish, no point please? if we don't know what we're talking about. Please, what do you mean by incoherent? You're talking me. Is that it? I'm going to try to explain it to you. It's incoherent on several levels. One, it's not coherent because you haven't instantiated its actuality, okay? And your failure to instantiate the rationale for that belief that it is the case that there is an impersonal ultimacy, right? And therefore, since you haven't instantiated, when you talk about the world, there's nothing that connects anything together categorically or provides uni unity or continuity that's real because there's nothing identifiably or def and defensible that imposes that. So I'll ask you once again, how did you rationally come to believe that it is the case that there is an, an ultimacy that is the concrete universal, but that it's impersonal? How did you rationally come to believe that yeah. that is necessarily the case? Speaking of monologues, I asked you what you meant by incoherent, and I still have no idea what you mean, man. Hey, sir, can you, how did you put that in a bit more of a bumper sticker format? You see, folks in the audience, 
This is the little game that they play. It's called verbal dodgeball. Okay. I'll ask the Speaking question. Again. How did you see? See now you're being deceitful. How oh, I'm pointing out. You're saying I monologue. You're literally you talking question, to the audience. Is is this concrete universal? Is this ultimacy? Does it and being impersonal? Does it necessarily exist? I think it must. Yeah. Okay. Now, how did you come to the conclusion that it necessarily exists? Um. That's a paradigm. I'll, I'll throw that out there. I think that there's just something responsible, uh, given um, emergent. The, 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 yes. It, it, at the end of the day, I have to uh, say. I'm this still is, waiting. This is bedrock. Wait, okay. That, that's so a paradigm. Did, yeah. Okay. So, so how did you exclude that you're in a chance world where there isn't indeed uh, a an a, an ultimacy that's impersonal? How did you rule out that this is a chance world? I I I, I didn't. Oh, okay. So, so then your ultimacy then is just simply utter conjecture, and it's not necessarily the case, is it? I'm saying that there is an ultimacy, even in that. Is this world, ultimacy? There's no, an ultimacy. Is is this impersonal ultimacy? Is it necessarily the case? Yes, even in that chance world. Good, good. How, then how did you? How did you come to arrive at that and that we're not in a world where there is no ultimacy, that we're just in a chance world of spontaneous occurrences? Yeah, I, th I think it's an unavoidable logical conclusion. I think that there that's must a, be. That's a, that's a non-informative non response and a dodge. How did oh. you logically and rationally conclude that the impersonal ultimacy necessarily exists? How did you come to that conclusion? I, I don't I don't know how to answer that any further. I'm sorry. So you so you don't. I don't have know what else you want from me. So you don't have a rational accounting that the uh, impersonal ultimacy necessarily exists and necessarily excludes. Well, I I, I, I just said it, it must by virtue of there being something. There's, I mean, there's something. No, necessary sir, to sir, sir. How That's do you kind of know? That I'm getting at. How do you, okay? How do you know, or why do you rationally believe that necessarily? There is an ultimacy. How? I, I don't. Again, it, 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 there would need to be. It's a, that. It, that's what makes it a necessity. It's, it's a sort of tautological. Sir, 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 sir. Does this thing necessarily exist? As yeah. opposed to there is nothing that is ultimately necessary. That we live in a chance world where nothing is singularly ultimate. How did you determine one scenario over the other? I, t I told you a while ago that I didn't. Um, I, I, I don't exclude the possibility. Stop right there. That the Re repeat right there. So you haven't determined that one scenario is true rather than the other. Is that correct? And so insofar as this being a chance reality, not insofar as okay. this not something so, also so, responsible so, for these realities. So, so you don't have a rational justification that we are in a not chance world. You just prefer you would prefer to exist within a non chance world. That's not what okay. I said. I said that I allow okay. the possibility, but I, sir, I don't believe sir, that's the case. Listen listen to me. Do you have a rational basis to affirm that we are not in a chance? world where there is nothing singularly ultimate. Do you have a rational basis that that's not the case? Uh, actually, I don't know if I could uh, convince somebody of that on um, – because right, that's, that's Do perfectly reasonable. Do you have a rational basis that there, that there is not the case that there is not an ultimacy? Do you have a rational basis for that? That there's not an ultimacy. I don't. I don't have a rational basis for that. Okay. So that when you choose that there is an ultimacy over is not an ultimacy, then you're being arbitrary, aren't you? I. Um, by the way, um, and I'm not trying to dodge you, brother. Um, I, I promise. Um, I'm. Get, I'm just. I got like five minutes, and then I, I, I'm going to have to bust that's out of not, here. I have had. A, I've had a great time, that, by the way. 
that, that's um, fine. But, and and listen, um, I'm a little bit irritated at your dodging, but setting I'm not, that I'm aside, pro- and I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound like a okay. dodge. I, listen, I, I, listen, I really listen, do got to go. I'm, you okay? In spite of my criticism of you, your performance is vastly better than the usual troglodyte atheist and unbelievers that we deal with. <laughs> what, what's okay? troglodyte? What is that? I, I don't know that one. It's a kind of uh, a troglodyte is a kind of like uh, a subhuman creature who drags their knuckles. You know, um, did you ever see the movie The Time Machine? Oh, I, I think I have an idea. Okay. You remember those 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 subhuman creatures? They were troglodytes. Okay. okay. Well, technically, those were post-human creatures. Those are more yeah. available than we troglodytes. Are, troglodytes are very closely genetically related to uh, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. I don't want to get. I, I, you got me for five more minutes. I'm sorry if I detracted too far. Do you, okay. Can you remember so, where you so, left off? So <laughs> you are selecting that we live in a world where there is something singularly ultimate versus there are not. Is that an arbitrary decision? Well, I've already explained that I don't think there is a possibility of a is world existing where there isn't something singularly ultimate. I asked you the question, is your selection of one scenario over the other, is it arbitrary? Um, no, I wouldn't say so, be, um, because why I think that my position singular, is more likely given the multi- Why is a singular okay. ultimate the case rather than not the case? Uh... A, a singular as opposed to multiple, or a singular as opposed to nothing you couldn't at all? Have a, um, you couldn't have a multiple ultimate. It would have to, by definition, be singular. I'm just adding yeah, singular, I singular for, well, there you go. for, There's em- your for emphasis. No, no, no. I'm adding it for emphasis, even though it's a re- it's redundant. Okay? All right? Sure. Now, why is there... Singular a, by I, definition, I, I, and it I, must I, be I, there. I could say, why is there an ultimacy? I'm just adding singular there for emphasis, Okay. I think that's fair, though. I mean, because I, you know, again, I think that why the, that have there you is a selected thing. that there is an ultimacy rather than we live in a world of a plurality of events where there is not an ultimacy? Why did you select one scenario over the other? Is it arbitrary or not arbitrary? I don't believe that that is arbitrary. Um, Good. I, I, as you had mentioned, the, the idea that there is. What is the reason why you selected one worldview over the other? What's the reason? I think that the alternatives to a singular um, uh, explanation for uh, everything, like a single fundamental thing, um, um, is, uh, and I'll explain further, um, but more likely than multiple, for reasons that I'm sure you'll agree with, and um, far more likely than none, because clearly something exists. So you're making you're making a category you're making a category error again. Okay, we're talking about a comprehensive and complete model of reality. Okay, so there, therefore, the 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 sum total of the worldview itself is not subject to contingency, although things within the system could be contingent. Okay. So either one or the other is the case. Either either we are in a world where there is something ultimate, or we're in a world of uh, uh, of a plurality of things and a plurality of events where there is not something that is that is ultimate. Okay. I agree. Now you said the selection of one over the other is not arbitrary. So what is your reason to select one over the other? You cannot invoke a probabilistic assessment because it's a category error. Right. I think that the only explanation for a universe such that you explain is one where there is more than one, quote, fundamental. And as you had mentioned at that point, we, we, not only does, do we have a logical a deni- inconsistency, a but we that's also a, have... You're not answering the question. I'm trying. Okay. I, maybe you're talking over my head. Maybe you're talking down to somebody you shouldn't be talking you down to. You are can, saying that we live in a world where there is something ultimate versus a world... Where there is not an ultimate, where it would just be a chance world, where there wasn't anything singularly dictating every instance of what is, can be, and cannot be. You have chosen one world versus another. The world itself, as a comprehensive uh, package, oh, I think is itself, okay. the world itself, as a, as a composite, itself is not a contingent thing. Okay? 
There can be contingencies within the world, but the world itself as a composite is itself right. is not contingent. Well, now you have decided yeah, okay. you have decided that the complete model of reality itself, okay? You, you can't say that a model of reality is one of possibility versus the, the other one because now now the world itself is not the worldview. It no longer is a worldview. Okay? It's simply well, a contingency a within the point. Good. So how did you select one comprehensive composite worldview versus the other? How did you decide right. one is sure. real and the other is not? Sure. So um, this honestly uh, what, what the world you're describing essentially is things not being contingent on other things. Um, sort of throws like thermodynamics out the window, for example. How yeah, did a really you damn good reason to think. World I'm, the reason why I think we don't live in that particular uh, universe. Uh, I'm answering. Uh, why don't I think that? All right, all right we had enough. <laughs> yes, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Oh, well. Today we're giving out the Darth Dawkins Award for the greatest Dodger and babbler and filibuster of the day, and that goes to that gentleman. So we're done. A pathological oh, dodger. Dear. Okay. But I must say, he certainly has the gift of gab. Yeah. He would make for a great congressman or a great corporate lawyer. Imagine, imagine if he's married, when he got married, if the priest or the, the minister or the rabbi or the justice of peace said, do you, sir, take this lovely woman here? Do you take her to be your lawfully wedded wife? Now, given what we heard here tonight, do you think he's capable of giving a straight answer? Depends what you mean by wife. Depends what you mean by married. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, if anyone would like to come up and comment on what you heard, you're free to come up. To agree or disagree? Absolutely amazing. Welcome, Derek. What would you like to say? Uh, you're right, Darth. Uh, it's just... It, it, it's... <laughs> these... They just dodge, 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 evade, and then you try... Yeah, I like you how you always... Fine, uh, Derek. Precise... How is it? Specific, concise, but then they'll just be... See? Even even those of them who are even on their best behavior engage in obfuscation, verbal misdirection, I'm just going to embarrassation. Because I don't want a big red it, look, it was painfully <laughs> obvious that he was. Um, it, it it was it was painfully obvious that he was just filibustering. It was painfully obvious. Yeah, and he switched to probabilistic, Darth. He went from there's no like he went from oh God no 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 you're not understanding. A a a composite worldview is itself not a contingency. It could be really categorized as contingent or probabilistic. Uh -huh. yep. See, happens okay. in an uncautious right. moment. Yeah, because you talk about in uh, creation. I just got my phone and. Uh, because, but you see, here's the thing is, Whoa, so I repent to that. I hope if it's probable, me. okay, Very naughty. then that destroys We're in the, middle the concept of, of ultimacy. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's why you... He, do, he, doesn't un, he doesn't understand that saying that the ultimate worldview, the impersonal ultimacy versus the non-ultimacy chance world that the impersonal ultimacy is more probably true, well, he then destroys its nature of ultimacy because then it is the ground of everything. Therefore, itself, it's not – the ultimacy itself no, it no longer is absolute, but whatever it is, is sit, sit there, it, it's subject to probabilistic conditions. Therefore, it's not ultimate. Yeah, like you try to make, like, they try to make God, like, part of creation where God is now contingent. It, well, that, no that, that, yeah, so, like, when people say, well, God probably exists, or somebody says God does, God probably doesn't exist, Ventil makes a very astute point. 
that's saying any God that you would invoke that you say he probably exists, he's no longer God. Because you have now you have now annihilated either intentionally or unintentionally that God is ultimate. Yeah, man, I would destroy okay. the cre- cre- uh, creator. Right, creator. because what is ultimate is what dictates what is, can be, or cannot be. Yep. So, so because this guy has the gift of the gab, which he certainly did. Yeah. He just he just decided. You know what? I'm just going to filibuster my way out of it, and then when I get called out on the carpet for filibustering and not answering the question, what are you talking about? I'm not filibustering. You know, it's it's like some pedophile who's caught with his hand down the pants of a child. What are you talking about, officer? Yeah. I'm not doing anything wrong, officer. Yeah, he didn't answer your your question straightforward. He just repeat the question after you. He's just it's like a, a monologue. I'm not saying there isn't. A, it's like that's that's why you just basically just resort to. No, but you see, he wants to sit there and say necessarily God doesn't exist. God's not necessary. He doesn't exist. Why? Well, be well because you see, there's this other ultimacy, and its existence is probable. It, it's it's probable, but that does, then it's not then it's not. It's fundamentally necessary. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know how I always say, even the best behaved unbelievers, when, when they're presented with the creator-creature distinction, okay, i.e. the Christian worldview, but we'll call it the creator-creature distinction, even those individuals who are on their better behavior, okay, they're going to resort to some level of deceptive responses because if they don't, then they're going to be brought to the position where their declaration or invocation of the not God world is indefensible, unsustainable, unsupportable, and without rational defense. Yeah, you want to hear one? That's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because uh, I remember from from your uh, Discord, like when you were on, I think his name is Friction Philosophy or something, like uh, modality, you know. Oh, yeah, that, that rings a vague, I vaguely remember that, yeah, what about him? Yeah, it's like, the reason why there isn't God because, oh, there's someone that, it's like, cause, because there's like a God, like uh, the good cognitive, Cognition, what's it called? Cogn- cognition, cognition, reasoning that what can or cannot be like it's like there's something else that's that's yeah. like God. That's why there is no God. I'm like, what? Yeah. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Lee for her avatar picture of Terry Gar. Terry Gar was a wonderful actress. She's still alive, but uh, she's in a wheelchair now. But Great selection. And if you guys don't know who Terry Garr was, she was a wonderful movie and television actress. I shouldn't say was, like she's like she's dead. She's still alive. That's a picture of her from her her role in Young Frankenstein, which she was unbelievably funny in that movie. But good avatar pick. And it never fails, stories. It's like when they challenge, they're like, oh, I don't know. I, it's... They just resort to filibustering. And then when you call them out on their filibustering, they go, I'm not filibustering. Yes, you are. <laughs> you can't sit there and say God is not necessary by virtue of something that is probabilistic. Okay? Because if it's probabilistic, then it's not necessarily the case. And if it's not necessarily the case, you can't deploy that to vitiate God being necessary. Only something that was necessary that's not God, that functions as the ultimate, can uh, uh, vitiate God as necessary. But you'll notice how I call them out on the carpet. They'll say, well, God's not necessary. God's superfluous. Well, by what means? Well, there's something ultimate, but it's not a mind. Okay, good. How did you determine that there's something ultimate that that's uh, it's a mind? How did you come to believe that rationally? 
as opposed to a world where it's just a world where there's spontaneous occurrences, okay? And nothing, there's nothing singularly ultimate dictating every instance of what is, can be, or cannot be. Where, where'd you get that from? Oh, well, it's probabilistic. Oh, so the, the ultimacy itself is probabilistic? So it's, it's, it's not necessarily necessary? Yeah, I think he's do you, see, do, you, do, you see, do you see the intellectual lengths that unbelievers will go through these ridiculous, convoluted mental gymnastics that are, that are borderline incoherent rather than to accept that that which is ultimate is a mind and that he has revealed himself through all of creation? Right? You see, these people are motivated – because they don't want to acknowledge their creature, excuse me, their creatureliness, which means their culpability. The moment we acknowledge that that we are not autonomous in our mind and cognition, then the only alternative is our creatureliness and therefore our culpability. But because the disposition of the human heart is at enmity with God, it doesn't want to acknowledge God. So it assumes for the mind of man, for itself, its non-creatureliness until demonstrated otherwise. Okay, let me repeat that again. The unbeliever assumes without justification the non-creatureliness of its own mind until demonstrated otherwise. But what is what demonstrates that their mind is non-creaturely, that it's autonomous? The answer is nothing. They insist on demand that God be proven. And we point out to them that God has been proven by the creation itself. They say, no, 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 that doesn't cut it. Right, it, it does, that doesn't prove God. Say, good. So now you're making a counter proposal that all facts are not indicative and revelatory of God by virtue of His purpose, and therefore you're invoking that these facts are brute facts, which is the opposite of being created facts. So what justifies that they're brute facts? Well, the answer is nothing, because that's the nature of brute facts. Now He did invoke the brute facts. He, he, he believes that all facts ultimately derive from the impersonal ultimate. But did we hear, hear him ever once give a rational justification other than rambling filibustering uh, for no. this impersonal ultimate? Other than him no. saying, well, no. it's no. more probably true than not. But you see, this doesn't apply here. This is a category error. Okay? Because in order to have something that is more probably true than not, you have to have what is static and what is dynamic. But then if what is ultimate is probabilistically true, it no longer is ultimate. It's not, it's, it's not singularly uh, necessary for everything yeah. that is not itself. Yeah, Doc, I just wish he would just give us, like, a just answer, like, what control... Well, like, he, if could, it's not God. he couldn't and he wouldn't because he doesn't want to repent of his false belief in his would-be autonomous cognition and reason that that he, he his mind just simply exists without the necessity of referencing the necessity of God. The, the They... They claim that they want their criterion of belief to be filled with God in the absence of it being fulfilled. They refuse to believe in God. But their alternative model of reality is not fulfilled by their criterion of belief. They, they instantly abandon that criterion of belief when they ipso facto adopt the not-God world. Okay? So why would a human being lay out a criterion of belief for God as the creator and the ultimacy of reality and say, well, you haven't fulfilled that criterion of belief for the God world, but then adopt the negation of that, the not God world, and have it not be fulfilled by that criterion of belief, the same criterion of belief that they used to dismiss God. Why in the world would an individual do that? Because they don't want to acknowledge their creatureliness and what follows from that, their culpability toward their creator. They don't want to acknowledge this. Right now, 
there are those people who will acknowledge they're a creator, but they won't acknowledge it that it's the God of the Bible. So what they then do is they erect in their thinking a idolatrous construct that, that cannot fulfill the requirements that are going to be necessary for human reason, truth, and intelligibility. And by the way, atheism and agnosticism are every much as an idolatrous construct as believing in Allah or Ahura Mazda of Zoroastrianism or the Unitarian concept of God in, in, in contemporary Judaism. These are all idolatrous constructs to avoid the one true God who has revealed himself in creation and through the course of human history in the Christian scriptures and ultimately in Jesus Christ. And they don't want to acknowledge this to come to a saving knowledge uh, and, and have their sins forgiven by believing in Jesus Christ, right? Because this is going to cause them to forfeit their belief in their own personal autonomy. They just don't want to give it up. But guess what? You know, um, uh, I remember the great missionary Jim, um, what was his name? Jim Elliott, he set up, he is no fool who gives up what he can never keep to gain, which he can never get for himself. I didn't paraphrase that quite right, but that's, uh -huh. that's the gist of it. To get to, to gain what he can never lose. He is no fool who gives up what he can never keep to gain what he can never lose. I mean, these people are just whistling past the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> You know, people think I'm harsh. Hey, guess what? Wait till Judgment Day, boys and girls. Okay? Wait till you, you think I'm harsh? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like how you... God, God, God incarnates himself in Jesus Christ. He dies on the cross to save us from our sins, to those of us who repent and believe on Jesus Christ. Right? And God offers us forgiveness and salvation. Right. And, you know, if we reject that, you know, the book of Hebrews says, hey, you you reject the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. There will no longer remain a sacrifice for your sins. Right. And people think I'm harsh. Hey, I'm warning you of what the, is to come, folks, but they don't want to take it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Doc, I like how you're very. Uh... You're very clear, concise. You challenge them because it just reveals how how much if they're knowledgeable. I like how earlier you said something. And if like, I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, if we Bible believing Christians who extol that Jesus Christ is who He said He was, He is the living Savior, and He's coming again. If we are wrong, okay, then come up and present your case. But you see, all we see is people coming up and filibustering, lying, obfuscating, prevaricating, misdirecting, being bickering. This this guy start. You see, he started off yes, good. being very cordial and mature, but about halfway through, uh -oh. we clearly saw a shift in his disposition and in and his conduct to to filibuster. Yeah, there was no way because he was going to have to actually answer. Like he couldn't get away because I just noticed like people, when you actually challenge them and, and, and unpack their worldview or, or what they know, it gets com uncomfortable. And, and that's when they resort to all this because when when that guy said thermo, okay. thermodynamics, I was I was okay. trying to get what he Yeah. So, Sid, would you like to come up and explain to us? And I would have loved to have spoken with you and removed those two trolls, but that's your option. Can you please come up and tell us how, in your disbelief in God, you have any basis to disbelieve anything? Okay? Because you had a room entitled something to the effect reasons to disbelieve. In a not-God world, on what basis do you have to disbelieve anything? If we don't accept that this world is, and it operates by virtue of the mind, the purpose, and the plan of the God of the Bible, and that it is the mind and the purpose and the plan of God that determines what is 
and can be and what cannot be, then if you don't believe that, then on what basis do you have to disbelieve anything? Come on up, Sid. <coughs> you had a whole room. <coughs> Excuse me. I gotta get it. Alright, die. When we reject the creator creature distinction that God is, He's the eternal creator, and we are in His plan, and we reject this then we have no metaphysical background information to disbelieve anything. Okay? None. What are they going to do? Appeal to the laws of nature? Oh, are laws of nature real? And what makes them real? If God is not the one who is behind everything... And as they say in the child song, he's got the whole world in his hands. Then explain to me, are the laws of nature, are they eternal? Are they without beginning? Are they self-contained? Are they absolute? Right? And is this plurality that they speak of laws of nature? Are they discrete from each other? And where nothing is singularly in control? You see, there's so. You see, the reason for this hubris is because of Chuck. Chuck came along a few years ago, and 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 Chuck decided that you know he no longer felt he needed God. Okay, and because Chuck wanted to make a name for himself, he wanted to be famous. Chuck decided that he was going to rip off some other ideas of some hardworking scientists. And he confabulated, stole ideas from other people, and he presented them as himself. And therefore, he provided a, a, a basis by which we could remove God from the sphere of rational discussion. But most of you know Chuck by the name of Charles Darwin. Okay. Uh -huh. And this, and, and because of the, the the really bad theory, the garbage theory of evolution. This has emboldened people to think that they don't have a need for God. And if you think that that's far-fetched, even Richard Dawkins, the, fam the rabid, foaming-at-the-mouth evolutionist and atheist himself, has said the same thing. He said atheism was inconceivable before Darwin, but with Darwin, he has provided atheists with intellectual fulfillment. Not that the theory of evolution, ipso facto, gets you that there's no God, but it provides the conceptual framework by which you can just be dismissive of God. We don't need no stinking God. We don't need no badges. We got evolution, man. We got naturalism. We got the laws of nature. We don't need God. Right? Hey. Really? Good. Can you defend that? No, they can't. It's funny how science, there was a science explained everything, yet science itself. Science you know, can't explain it. itself. There are numerous fundamental pillars of science that the empirical methodology itself cannot ground. Okay. Yeah, you can use that as a... <laughs> you, see, you see, once the theory of evolution, the garbage theory that it is, gain, you know, grew like a, the proverbial snowball down the hill, and it metastasized throughout the world into academia, right? and it became thoroughly entrenched, it's because people no longer wanted to retain God in their minds or be thankful to him, and they decided to worship creation. Okay, so another, we don't need a God. We got time and chance and evolution. 
by the way, I say it's a garbage theory for very good uh, scientific reasons. But when people who have drunk the Kool Aid of believing in the the Dar, you know the Darwinian view or the neo Darwinian synthesis, they they think it's not garbage because there there's so much time and effort being papers and books and contemplation and speculation. But when you actually look at it, you know, like the fossil record, you look at genetics, it really doesn't support it. I'll be back in a few minutes.